Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 11 in our Arduino tutorial series on developing a non-axis inertial measurement system. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee and get ready to learn how to install Python. Okay, let's just kind of talk about why we're going to install Python. Let's remember what we are doing. We are developing a non-axis inertial measurement sensor system. And if you remember where we left off, we are working with the BNO055 <clears throat> non-axis sensor from Adafruit, and we have it hooked up to an Arduino Nano. And where we left off in lesson number 10 is we are getting all the data off of the sensor. We're getting three channels of acceleration, three channels of data from the gyros, and three channels of data from the uh, magnetometer. So we are getting nine different measurements from this sensor. And then we are doing some simple trigonometry to approximate the roll, the pitch, and the yaw. So we are getting the three kind of approximations of Euler angles from this sensor. And if you remember where we left off, we are able to plot that. We are able to plot that data on our serial plotter. And I think I can get that to pop up here with a little bit of luck. Let me see if I can get a view that you can see here. Uh, I believe this will come to life. Okay, yeah, there it is. And so you can see that what we are able to plot here is we're able to plot yaw. You can see our yaw signal changing as we change the heading. Our pitch. Okay. And then our roll. So we are getting roll, pitch, and yaw calculated from the data coming from the sensor. And then we can sort of plot it on this serial plotter. But we're now to the point that we want to start doing more with the data than what we can do using just the Arduino. So what we want to do is we want to pass the data from Arduino, and then we want to catch it in Python on the PC. And then we can start doing some real visualizations and 3D animations and things like that. So your task today is to install Python, which is what we are going to do. So we will go to Google. All right, we will go to Google. And what you want to search on is install Python. All right. And then uh, the first result for me is download Python at python.org. It's python.org slash downloads. I'll click on that. <clears throat> I am on a Windows machine. I am going to show you how to install Python for Windows 10. If you are on Windows 95 or if you have a Mac, you're going to have to kind of figure things out yourself because I can't show installations for every different possible computer setup. And most people at this point, I think, are probably on Windows 10. I want to click on the Windows link here. I don't want to just click the download button. I want to get the one that I want. So I'm going to click on Windows. And then I have a 64-bit machine. So I want to download the Windows x86-64, the executable. I don't want to deal with a zip file. I want the nice little executable file that I can just click on. Then, So I'm going to click on Download Windows x86-64 since I have a 64-bit computer. And then since I am using Chrome, you will see that that shows the download here in the lower left corner. If you're not on Chrome, it should be in your download folder. Now I am going to click on that to install. See how easy this is? <clears throat> All right, now this is very, very important. You want to have it add Python 3.7 to your path. So you want to check that box because what that will allow you to do then is, is that it will always find the Python program. It'll always find the Python executable. If you don't have this, then you have to execute the commands from the same folder that the Python program is in. So it can be very confusing. You want to get that path thing added. And now I just want to do the standard install. So I'm going to say install now. 
Okay, it's going to take a few minutes for this to install, but I'm just going to let it run. Enjoy your coffee. How are things going? Hopefully most of you are on Windows 10 by now. I really think most of you are. Okay. Uh, we'll, we're going to kind of learn Python as we go. And so I'll just show you some real simple commands today. Just make sure that we have the installation going and uh, kind of play around with it just a little bit. But the main thing today is to just get it, uh, just get it installed. And we are almost done. Okay. Looks like we are all the way across there. And uh, looks like it's done, but okay, there it goes. Uh, special thanks. Okay, so that is good. So we are going to close this. And then if you come in the bottom left, and what you need to search on is I D L E. And what you see, it pops up idle, idle Python for 3.7 and for me 64 bit. And so I'm going to click on that. And what you can see is I am getting an, uh, a Python shell. Okay, the Python shell. What you can do in the Python shell is you can type in Python commands one line at a time. So in this shell, I could type in print. And then Python wants the prints inside of a parenthesis. <coughs> and then hello world. Okay, a one line Python program, enter. Prince Hello World. Boom! We wrote one line of Python code. But we don't want to do things one line at a time. We actually want to write a program. So you come up here to File. Okay, you come up here to File and then you say New File. And now you can stack your lines of code in one place. So here, let's say I'm going to write my first simple program. I will say My Reading is equal to, in the quotes, the string, hello world, end quote, okay. And then I'm going to print, I'm going to print my greeting. <clears throat> in order to run the program, you've got to save it. So I'm going to come under File, and I'm going to say Save As. And we'll just leave it there and call it hello. I never put a space in a file name. So save the program as hello world. And now you come under run and you say run module. Okay. And then it pops the shell back up. And what did it do? It printed hello world, just like what we wanted it to. Very, very, very good. So I am going to get this shell out of the way. All right, well, let's do something simple like a for loop, okay? Let's write a very simple for loop. And so I am going to say uh, for i in range, where do I want my i to go? Let's go from 1 to 10 in steps of 1, okay? like that. So I start at 1, I go to 10, and then in steps of 1, like that. And then here, a for loop, you tell it kind of like where to start with a colon. Like remember in Arduino we used an open curly. Well here we just use a colon. And then we hit return. You notice when we hit return it comes over indented. In Python, which I don't like very much, you keep track of what's inside the for loop by indenting. As long as you are indented, the for loop will continue. When you stop indenting, that will be the first line after the for loop. So what are we going to do? Well, let's just do print i. Okay, print i. And now let's run. Okay, what's that going to do? I go from 1 to 10 in steps of 1. Man, my uh, window is very, very big here. It's embarrassingly big. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. Okay, so what did it do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this is another thing. So we're getting really quick to the things that I don't like about Python. 
one thing that I don't like about Python is I don't like oh and I hate Windows when it does that. okay one thing I don't like about Python is I don't like the fact that uh, it uses indentation for the loops okay because you got to keep track of your indentation and it's got to be kind of perfectly indented and the first thing I don't like the second thing I don't like about Python is you notice how we said start at 1 and go to 10 in steps of 1 well what it does is it stops before 10 so like if you want to go to 10 you've actually got to go to 11 so you say start at 1 keep looping as long as you are less than 11 and then go in steps of 1 so let's see if that will work so I'm going to come here and run module you must save it yes okay and then it went from 1 and you can't see that because I am in your way let me see all right so let's come over here run it again run module okay and it went from 1 to 10 okay so it's saying loop as long as you are less than 11 which means 10 will be the last the last one that does okay well what if we go in steps of 2 that should go 2 through 10 the even numbers okay run module okay Ah, no, I started at 1, so it went the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. That makes sense. So let me start at 2 through 11. This should be the even numbers. And I hit the wrong thing. Run, run, run module. Okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So you kind of get the idea here. Uh, let, me, let me also say... Uh, j is equal to 2 times i and then print j equal and then comma j. Let's see if we can do that. Run, run module. Okay, so i is 2 and j is 4. i is 4, j is 8. So you get a little bit your first little your first little taste of uh, your first little taste of Python. Okay, what your homework is? Your homework is to go in and kind of get familiar with Python. I've helped you get it installed. I've shown you how to do a for loop. I need you to play around. See if you can figure out how to do an if statement. Again, all the places in Arduino where we used open curly and close curly for a bracket for a for a clause in Python, you do that with indentation. So go and. See See if you can figure out how to do an if statement. You'll know for loops, you'll know if statements. And then when we come back in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to install the visual library so we can start doing 3D animations and 3D visualizations. But play around with Python between now and then to kind of get familiar with it. Okay, guys, this is Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. This has been a quick lesson, but an important one. We'll come back next week and we'll start learning a lot more about Python. Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.